thank you for being here on this Bible study night. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read uh, verse 7 and down through 9. Praise the Lord. I forgot I wasn't uh, preaching this Sunday because we have Brother Jeremy Joyce in our family revival. Don't, hey. All right. Until you make sounds like that in church like this, you'd get shot. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Someone said, Pastor, is it okay for me to carry? I said, don't say anything else. Carry what? Uh, that's, that's where we're going to stop that conversation, amen? So I don't know. They might be here. I don't know. Amen. Come on. But I do have a feeling if uh, Ahmed came in, he might get shot if he started trying to shoot us. So be careful. Aren't you thankful you're in the house of the Lord? I tell you, I love this place. Brother uh, Hawkins said it to me today. He said, man, I love this place. He said, I've tried to live for God without this kind of place. He said, and you can't do it. Didn't you tell me that? Can't do it. Can't live for God without a church. It meant a lot. It's good to see Josh and Emily here. Amen. All the way from Dallas. They're coming home. See, you can leave Vider and think it's all in the big city. And then you realize it takes 45 minutes to drive down the street to get a hamburger and all that traffic. Amen. And uh, there's no place like home. And uh, I, I, that's the truth. 2 Corinthians 12, and Paul writes here. I thought I was preaching Sunday, so I'd, I'd been working on this, and, uh, and then I found out it was. I was like, well, you know what? Wednesday night, let's do it. And lest I should be exalted above measure through, uh, through abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that he might uh, depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. What a beautiful passage of scripture. Amen. I want to talk to you for a minute, a few minutes on the thought when God says no. When God says no. Let's pray. Lord, we sure love you. You're good. Thanks for Wednesday night Bible study. Thanks for moments uh, that we share in your presence, Lord, tonight in worship. Truly, we've already experienced your glory. It's visited our lives. I thank you, Lord, for what you will do in the remaining moments as we open our hearts to receive your wonderful word in the wonderful name of Jesus. And together we say in Jesus' name, thank you for standing. You can be seated. It is, uh, there's not a lack of instruction on how to receive a blessing. It, we don't lack for that kind of preaching how to name the blessing and I'm all about we are to be a blessed people and we are a blessed people amen um, I, 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 uh, but I don't really need instruction on how to act when I get blessed when I get blessed I, I shout and dance and say amen and uh, amen uh, I, I've got that down however I, I have found I've, I've, I need some instruction in my life uh, on how to act and what to do when I don't receive from God uh, the things that I feel uh, that he should have answered or if he answers the way that I don't want him to answer. When God doesn't say yes, God doesn't even say wait because dad always said there were three answers. It's wait, yes or no. And I'm cool, I love the yes, i cool with the wait, don't like the no. Uh, so how do I deal with, with that? I uh, 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 Studying here, of course, the book of... Corinthians, we find Paul, and he has in the chapters that that lead up to this twelfth chapter, he has uh, he's kind of, he's been boasting, not in a sense of arrogance, but he's been letting it be known what he has been through, that he has escaped kings and governors, and he has uh, 
He's, he's been survived shipwrecks. He's been beaten. Uh, he's, he's been alienated by people, but he was survived. And he's all of these, these, these hazards that he overcame. I mean, he's really just saying, hey, I, I've did this. I've accomplished this. I've, uh, and man, I've done it. I've, I'm in the victory side. Amen. It's been one big testimony. And then we're in the first part of chapter 12. If you read it, and he's talking about, he said, uh, I, 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 I went up into the third heavens, and I was in a, in, a, in a vision and having these. I mean, this is awesome, right? And so he's just in a, in a third heaven kind of moment, and he's talking about how amazing God is and how great God is and all the deliverance that God is, all the visual revelation that he's receiving in the Spirit. And then he, he says, and we read it there in verse 7, but lest I should be exalted above measure... He says, in the middle of, of this, he said, I, 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 that I don't get too high up and my life gets out of, out of balance through abundance uh, of revelations. He said, I, I had a thorn in, in the flesh. Lest I, I, get, I get up too high, he said, there was a, a buffeting. There was a, and, and, and the word buffet literally means to get hit hard. Amen. And uh, he said it, it, it was a, but he said, I, I, I received this. I, I received this thorn, this, this buffeting, this, I got punched in the gut. Amen. And uh, he, he said, I, I understand that it was God. And he was in that. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and the truth is, I have learned in my life, the more blessed I am, the more buffeted I get. <laughs> I said, I, I, hey, when I was at this level, I hardly got any hits. The higher you go in God, the higher you go in revelation. You're like, Lord, I want, I want a big... Well, if you want a big blessing, get ready for a big punch. It's going to come your way. That, but that's part of it. Why is, why is that so? Why is it that God allows uh, these things in our lives? I'll tell you why. Because Proverbs says it this way. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. And, but a just weight uh, is, is his delight. He says it is here in the buffeting, in the thorns of our lives. Uh, the reason that God will say no is to bring balance to our lives. God has to balance our lives out. Uh, constantly saying yes is not bringing balance. And so there's times he says no. He allows things. And he says if your life gets out of balance, it's an abomination. So I, I, I've, I've kind of been studying out all the abominations of God. And I put them on the screen. I'm just going to fly over them. But to tell you how much God uh, hates abominations. Here's some of the other things that he has, calls abominations. Idols, customs of pagans, sins of men, a forward man. That means a perverted man. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, wicked scheming heart, feet that are quick to sin, a false witness, a sower of discord, wickedness, sacrifices of the witness, the way of the wicked, the thoughts. These are wicked things, the proud heart, justifying of the wicked, refusing of the law, uh, to, to hear the law, prayers of, re, of the rebel, uh, homosexuality, uh, taking ornaments from idols uh, when being destroyed, any idolatrous practices, look, offerings, to, and on and on, injustice, incest, adultery, murder, robbery, cheating others, you can, hey, all of these things are abominations, uh, but he says a life that's out of balance is this, I have the same feeling to that as I do to all of these things. So, he says, what I do in your life uh, is I say no sometimes. Uh, I don't always answer with yes because the mission uh, is not to always be the blessing uh, of receiving, uh, but to keep your life in balance. Amen. And so I've got to say, Lord, I trust that you will keep my life in balance. Uh, it's how he does it. Uh, it's how he does it. Amen. He keeps my life in balance by saying no. Lord, I need $100,000. No. Come on, somebody. I need it. Uh, I need it. Uh, and so it is that he balances us. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is uh, that, that, that you are not... Uh, going to receive everything that you ask for. I know you already know it, but boy, we sure do get ticked off when we hear no. Amen? Amen? So he keeps us all in balance. I, I don't care who you are. Everybody has got two sides. They might be wealthy and have a lot of gold, but there's, there's, there's a counterbalance. They're poor in something. They might not have a lot of money, but they're wealthy in, the, in something you can't, can't balance out in a checkbook. 
Come on, they, they might be wise in one area, but they struggle in another area. I might be a victor in one area, but I'm going to tell you, I'm a victim in, another, in, in the other area. There's always a counterbalance to that side, amen? And, and the truth is that some people and some of us only let, let, let reveal the one side. All I do is say, oh, I'm, hey, I'm so great. I've got victory. And that's what Paul is doing here in chapter 11, chapter 12. I've done great. I've survived this. Oh, I, man, I don't got no problems. Everything's great, man. It's wonderful. I, it, everything is hunky-dory. It's so, oh, oh, great, great, great. And, and, and then there's some, it just depends where they're at. Some people, they, they're on the other side. All you ever see of their life is the bad. You know, oh, it's so bad. I, there's some people I've told you, I'm scared to ask them how they're doing. You know, just, whoo. I don't want you to lie, but my goodness, if you've never said, I'm living abundant, then I, you know what I mean? Oh, it's awful. I'm just in a dark place. I'm barely getting by. I've done so wrong. I've never, I never, you know what? I'm just not getting paid enough. Is there anybody here that's working for a boss? How many of you think you're getting paid enough? Okay, two out of all of you. No, I never, come on. <laughs> I never met somebody who said, you know what, I really think like my boss is overpaying me. You ever walked in, you ever, you ever walked in your boss's office? I know Jacob hasn't. <laughs> and been like, hey, boss, just wanted to thank you for my job. You're a great boss. You're paying me a fair wage. You're just a good man. Thank you very much. And I appreciate that you are... Are, are working, no, no, that's, just, that's not how it works. There's a, there's a balance. It's called the boss-employee balance. It's the guy that thinks you're getting too much versus the guy that doesn't think he's getting enough. That's the balance. That's the, that's the balance of it all. He, they could be paying you $100 million to sweep the streets. You'd be like, yeah, and I'm worth every penny. I'm worth every penny. I remember I had a boss. I was selling shoes. And uh, it was on 8% commission, but I was number one seller. And I said, uh, I went into her one day, Denise. I said, Denise, I'm worth more money than you're giving me. And if I don't get a raise, I'm quitting. She said, it was nice knowing you. I turned, she did. She took my badge and I was gone. I didn't have a job anymore. And all of a sudden, I, I realized that, that my pride had placed more value on me than I was worth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, but I'm thankful that in life there's been some times I've learned that there's some things that have kept me in balance. That, and the truth is, if you're honest and open and tell the whole story, uh, Mr. Woe is me, there's some good that's happening in your life. Oh, Mr. Guy that's never had any problems ever, there's some other sides to the story in your life. And I love that Paul here says, there's been a lot of great things that have happened in my life, but less that I get, a, less that I get out of balance, uh, that God has, God has sent a thorn in, in my flesh. Uh, there, there is a, a, a messenger. There is a, a punching in my gut. I keep getting I get punched in the gut. I don't have it all together. I don't want anybody to think I've got it all together. Nobody in this room's got it all together. Come on. And the greatest lie you could perpetrate to your children is that you are perfect or to people that you're perfect. There's nobody in this room that does not have failures, flaws. There's not. Come on. You might have victory in this area, but on somewhere on the backside, you're a victim in another area. But being honest with that, being transparent and not getting down and moping about the size I'm vic side I'm victimized in uh, and, and complaining about it and realizing that's how God is keeping my life balanced. Uh, I, I understand. It. That's why, you know, it's hard. It's hard to be saved wealthy. Jesus said it. He said, it's hard for a rich. America is rich. We are rich. I don't care how poor you think you are. You're a wealthy person. He said, it, but it, with God, all things are possible. So we're in a culture that's used to blessings, to receiving what we want. Uh, but, 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 but if we don't realize that there will be times when God says no, that's how he keeps us balanced. You don't want, you don't want to deal with a kid that never had a parent that told him no. Come on, somebody. 
I said, you don't want to have to try to marriage counsel some kid that mom and dad never said no. Their life's out of balance. They thought they got married, and they're just going to get a yes, 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 yes from their wife. But then reality hits them hard. Come on, baby. That's why moms and dads, we got to teach them. No, you don't get everything you want. No, you don't get that. No, you don't get those shoes. No, there's sometimes you've got the provision, but you need to remind the child of balance. Prepare them for, hey, the mission of a parent, and my mission as dad is to prepare my kids for life. That's why these, in, in these snowflake parents are ruining their children. All these well, my kid's getting bullied at school. My kid gets bullied at that school. My kid gets bullying. Hey, how many of you got bullied at school? How many of you get bullied at work a little bit? Your boss bullies you, somebody picks on. How many of you as an adult, everybody's, someone's been mean to you as an adult? I remember I, got, I, remember I had a friend, his name's Sander. Sunder, and my name's, of course, Matt, and we were buddies, and uh, we, we would get in a fight, you know, with the neighborhood guys. I'd get in a, me and Paul would beat up Sonder, and then the next day, Sonder would beat up me or whatever, and uh, <laughs> I was usually beating up Sonder, but, you know, I had to throw that in there to bring balance to my story. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't truly believe that I beat him up every single time, but, and, and, and I remember every time he got in a little fight, Oh, his mom was out there front and center, bah, 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 screaming, and, and then Paul and other neighbors, all their parents are coming out. They're all fighting each other. I remember one time, I, I mean, I got socked in the nose, and he ripped my shirt open, and had blood pouring down, and, and it was pretty bad. And I ran up to my dad. I said, Dad, he beat me up. Man, it was bad. He, and, and, and his mom and their moms are out there, and their dads are out there screaming. And my dad said, yeah, go fi figure it out. <laughs> Welcome to life. Dad never went out and fought for my battles. He never, come on somebody. No, 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 no. He said, learn it. Figure it out. Prepare him for life. Prepare him for life. Prepare him for life. Amen? I'm thank and that is my job. That is my job. He, Dad didn't start a bullying campaign and say, oh, poor little Matt got his feelings hurt. No, what he did is prepared me for life. You know what he taught me? He said, Matt, you know what? The bigger man can run away. He said, but if they get you in a corner, he said, you don't have to fight nice. He said, you get out of the corner, whatever it takes. He said, you punch, you scratch, you claw, you bite, but you get out of the corner. He said, but if you're not in the corner, just walk away. That was pretty good advice. I've used that advice through the remainder of my life, amen, that, hey, if, I can, if I'm not in a corner, just walk away. It's the, that's, and that's a principle I learned because my dad taught me balance. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that's how God is. God is allowing, sometimes he allows, pow, he allows the hit, pow, he allows the hit, pow. Oh, God, please stop it. Please make him stop, God. Please make him stop. Please. And he says, you know what? There's some things I've got to allow in your life to prepare you for life, friend. Uh, life isn't a, come on. Life isn't just tiptoeing through the tulips all the time. There's sometimes you go through it. And then he said, that's why, why on earth do you think God gave you the armor of God? Why did God give us armor? Because it looks great. No, he gave us armor because he said, there's going to be a fight. So in, come on, you know why there's a fight? Because somebody hit you. Come on, when hell comes against you and hits you, uh, you can get down, we can mope, and we can complain, uh, and we can say, God, take it away. But if God doesn't take it away, bust out your sword, uh, get stand up, uh, and don't back up and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to make it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the nose of my life keep me balanced. Paul was given a thorn. There's much debate about the thorn. I mean, guys that are so smart and their, their words are so huge in Greek and Hebrew, they, they've got, they can't agree on this thorn. 
Some of them, and I've spent a lot of time. Some of them saying, well, he, was, he struggled with, with uh, sexual temptations. Others said he was, that they were accusing him of being a, 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 a demon that has masked himself as an angel of light. And some are saying that he, uh, there was people that, would, uh, that, that rejected him as an apostle and that was his thorn. Others say that uh, someone was just opposing, constantly giving him trouble. Others believe that it was his eyesight, if some kind of physical uh, weakness. And so I'm spending all this time trying to figure out what the thorn is because I'm going to be smarter than all the smart people. And finally, it's like the Lord just kind of says to me, hey, the reason I called it a thorn and didn't give you the specifics is because it's not so much about his thorn, it's about your thorn. Because if, if I told you the exact thing, blindness, then you would say, well, I don't have blindness. That's a, that's a Paul problem. But I, didn't, I made it a general statement so that you could understand that if Paul had a thorn... You're going to have a thorn, Matthew. If Paul was buffeted, you're going to get beat up every once in a while, Bubba. You're going to have trouble sometimes. You're going to have some hardships. There's going to be things that get into your life that you're going to say, oh, oh. So if he had them, I'll have them. In the middle, and let me tell you when they come. They happen in the middle of a third heaven experience. <laughs> it is. It's right here in the middle. He's like, you know, whether I was in the spirit, I'm not, I don't even know. I was just like, woo, I was, ooh, I was in the Holy Ghost high. And it is amazing how at the highest moments of your life, come on somebody, I, I say it again, if you've been blessed big, get ready for a big hit. Come on, if, I said if you've been blessed big, you're going to be hit big. Amen? You're going to, hit, you're going to get hit. You'll all, you get hit. It's life. It brings you into balance. It's God. Not just life, that's God. It was given to me. Who? By who? God. God allowed that into his life. To keep him balanced. That's life. God will, God, he'll, just, uh, the timing is unbelievable. It is. I was, I told MIT and Swinsday nights, so I'll share it with you. I was, I'd, uh, uh, I, I'd preached Congress. There's 37,000 on Friday night, Tuesday night, 6,000. In Arkansas, I preached 43,000 in five days or three days, whatever. Some dude's like, man, in the history of North America, no one's ever preached to that many oneness believers. And I was like, whoa, man. So, you know, Tuesday night, I'm kind of like feeling my oats, you know. Like, ooh, man, they made a T-shirt with my sermon title. I'm the man, you know. Wednesday morning, no joke, I read the text of the MIT. I ain't going to read it to y'all. There's two of them. Ding. And I never get them. It's been like two years. Everything's just flowing along great. It's like, hey, pastor, just want to let you know we're quitting the church. Uh, so-and-so said something and something. I can't remember. I don't care. And then the next one was, I was complaining about something other that I'd done and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was like of all days. You know what I mean? Like, oh, could you not have waited till Thursday? Let me, let me sit on my Holy Ghost high for at least 12 hours, please. You know what I mean? But that's not how life works. Unless I get exalted. He said, I sent a thorn to remind you, hey, bub, if it wasn't for the grace of God, you're just a human being. Don't, so don't get mad at the thorn. Don't get upset at the, at the individual. Don't get upset at God because he allowed those things to come into your life. Realize God is keeping you in balance. He cares more about the balance of your life than he does the prosperity financially of your life. Because, friend, you can go to heaven, po to, to heaven poor. Come on. I said you can go to heaven poor. But you can't go to heaven out of balance. I said you can go to heaven poor, but you can't go out of balance. You can go to heaven without some earthly possessions that you think you need to have. But you can't. You can go to heaven without an arm, but you can't go to heaven without. That's why he said whatever it takes, whatever you got to cut off, whatever it is you got to do to get your life balanced, do that. Do it. So I learned that when God says no, he's keeping me in balance. I trust you, Lord, with the weight of my life. With the weight of my life. I trust you. I trust you. You're going, it's, going, it's going to happen. You're going to, it's going to happen. That's God. That's God. People are going to take advantage of you. That's God keeping you in balance. Who did I just have? I was someone at conference. He's like, oh, man. I got some pastor. 
Oh, man, and they're just, they're, route, they're taking advantage of me. I said, whoo, that's a good thing. He's like, why? I said, well, man, that means you got something to take. <laughs> I'd rather be the one that they're taking advantage of than the one that's having to take advantage of. Because if they're taking advantage of you, that means you've got something to take, that means you're blessed beyond what you would ever need. Come on. I really would. I would rather be the guy with enough money that they're like, oh, he's got so much money, I can just, you know, I can drive his car and not fill it up with gas. Come on, somebody. My dad taught me, you borrow a guy's car, you bring it back full of gas. Maybe that's an old-fashioned idea, but I'll always let my dad drive my car when he's here. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, um, you can drive the Toyota today, you can drive the Lincoln tomorrow, and you can drive my white car the next day. Thank you very much. They all three need oil changes too, by the way. Because Dad, if he looks up there in that little sticker... He might just be driving it down the road to preach in Houston. It's going to come back clean. It's going to come back with an oil change. And it's going to come back with a full tank of gas. That's a pretty good deal, ain't it? Now all y'all are going to try to lend your car to my dad when he comes. Uh, <laughs> but I, I would. I'd rather have a car that someone says that took advantage of. Because that means I got a car. That means I, am ble I would rather have a church that's, that's so big that people are like, ooh, I'm going to go start a church next to his church just to steal his people. Thank God. That means I've got people. That means you're in a place of blessing. Instead of being hating on the thorn and hating on the buffeter, why don't you realize, hey, he's got something in me. He sees blessing in me. There's a reason. Uh, hallelujah for the buffeting of my life. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Would I I'd rather be the winner than the stealer? Amen. Be ahead. So here he is, Paul. He's 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 got this thorn. Twelve and eight of Second Corinthians. He's got this thorn in in his flesh. And so what does he do? For this thing, I. What did he do? He went and started complaining to all his buddies. Oh my goodness, it's so bad, you know. Uh, I got this eyesight problem and I just can't I've been preaching all these revivals and miracles are happening and I can't seem to have a miracle I don't know why that's you know I just feel like it no 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 when the thorn of his flesh if it was physical eyesight whatever whatever it was my thoughts he, he didn't take it to man he took it to prayer He didn't try to handle the thorn on his own. He took it to the Lord in prayer. He got down on his knees and he dealt. He didn't deal with the flesh, uh, fleshly problem in the flesh. He dealt with the fleshly problem in the spirit. Come on, somebody. I said he, he learned how to get down and realize uh, that whatever it is that's buffeting me, whatever it is that's coming against me, uh, I can't resolve this uh, in the flesh, but I've got to get down and I've got to communicate to my heavenly father and say, Lord, uh, and you know what he prayed? He said, Lord, take it away. It's all right to ask God to take it away. Come on, but if you don't ever pray and if we don't ever get down and, and realize that this thing is in a spiritual attack against my life, uh, you'll never realize uh, that there are some really good answers and good things in the no. In the no. And so he got, come on, I said, if you don't pray about your thorn, you'll end up bitter. I said, you'll end up bitter because you'll start putting hate on whoever it is that buffets you. You'll put hate on whatever it is. You'll start despising the thorn when really it was God that put the thorn there in the first place. It's God. That, I don't know why he didn't say yes when I asked to remove. Come on, but if you get down in prayer, now look what happens. He got down and he prayed how many times? How many times? He three, I can't find anywhere else where Paul prayed for anything three times. Come on. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying he prayed more than he had ever prayed before when he got a thorn. I'm really wanting a prayer life. My God, why on earth is all hell breaking loose in my life? 
Stop complaining about all hell breaking loose in your life. The reason it's breaking loose is so that you'll come into the house of God. On that, when 24 hours a day this building's open, get down on your knees and you'll start developing a relationship with God and you'll realize the reason God, come on, is withholding some things. Maybe he's withholding the blessing so that you can get to know him. And I tell you what, I would rather get closer to him than, come on, than have, he said, you know what? I might not heal your body, but you're going to fall in love with me uh, I might not I might not save that situation I might not get you out of your financial bind like you want me to but at the end of the day uh, you're gonna know me uh, like you've never known me uh, you're gonna love me uh, like you've never loved me because because you took the thorn uh, you accepted it uh, you took the challenge to God in prayer hallelujah 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 the thorns of my life And and, and, and the messengers from Satan, the buffeting of my life, if you would be honest, I think on a Wednesday night we can all be honest and say, I've prayed more about the buffeting than I have the blessings. Would you just be honest and say, yeah, man, I'm going to tell you, when I got that raise, I spent four days in prayer and fasting. Anybody? Anybody going to deep travail, all night prayer meetings, when you got that bass boat for free? Come on, somebody. Did anybody do that? No. No, no, no. You didn't. No. When you got that, you were on Facebook saying, look at me. I got my boat. You was out in the water. You was up here saying, "Woo! he's an on-time God. Mm, man, blessing God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, thank you for the boat. Now I need a truck. Come on, somebody. That's how, that's how we act when we get blessed. And that's why God doesn't always say yes. That's why sometimes he withholds it and he allows the thorns of life and the buffeting of life because what did you do when you found out you had cancer? What'd you, come on. What did you do when you found out your mom and dad were going? your dad got cancer? I'll tell you what you did. You travailed all night. You know what you did? You walked into the... Come on, somebody. I, I don't see a lot of people up at this place snotting and slobbing because they won the lottery. But I've met a lot of them that were addicted to drugs. I've met a lot of them that got six months to live. I've met a lot of them. And you know what? At the end of your life, when you're laying... And the final day of your life, you're going to give God more praise for the thorn and for the buffeting than you ever did for the blessed when you get to the pearly gates and step from eternity into time and the streets of gold they 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 are under your feet and you begin to dance and you celebrate you you know what you're going to be celebrating you're going to be celebrating the thorn that pushed you into a prayer room you're going to celebrate the punch in the gut that bent you over to the place you said god i don't know i don't know I don't understand you got to take it away and you're going to say thank you Jesus that you said no thank you that you didn't give me everything I wanted thank you that you didn't give me the truck when I needed the truck and let me drive the old truck and work the old job if I'd have got the job I prayed for I wouldn't have been in church if I'd have got the money I asked for, I would have gave up faith in you. But thank you. I know I went paycheck to paycheck. I know I wondered how I was going to pay the bills. But Lord, I realize now I'm in a place where there are no bills. I'm in a place where there are no paychecks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My, I thank you. Paul's up in heaven saying, I couldn't see. I was, I was blind or whatever it is and he said but I prayed more in that season of my life uh, than I did in any other season hallelujah three times he prayed three times he prayed are you praying about your no are you praying about your thorn or complaining about it come on somebody I'm preaching to me he said I prayed three times he said and I ask that it be depart- be removed. He said, take it. It ain't no wrong, no wrong in asking God to take it. Amen. I mean, Jesus is getting ready to be crucified. You remember the prayer? What does he pray? You remember? He says, God, this is the man Jesus. He's 100% man, 100% God. It's dual nature. Christ, he's a man, he's, a, he's God, 100%. He cries, he laughs, he, 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 but he says, Lord... 
as a man. This, hey, he's as much of a man as you are, Jerry. And Jerry, you don't want to die on a cross. You know, if you know what's coming up, you don't want to die like that. No, no man, no woman in this room wants to die. You wouldn't want your worst enemy to die like that. And so as a man, he gets down and he does what Paul did. And he said, God, if it's possible, please remove this from me. Pull it away. Take it away. If there's another way, he said, please let it be taken away. And you know what God said? No. No. No, no, no. Because it, 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 it's all right to ask God. I don't understand or God could you take it away as long as those questions are pointed to heaven it's okay to have a question as long as it come on it's okay some people think it's a sin to question no father father why hast thou forsaken me Philip's questioning Jesus questions are okay as long as you're asking the right person it's okay to ask God I don't understand God I don't understand why this diagnosis I don't understand why this uh, God please and if you would please take it away and if he says yes get up and celebrate and if he says no get up and celebrate and get down again the next night and pray again and get down the next night and pray again and by the time whatever happens uh, you'll be thankful it came along are you thankful for Calvary you have a savior because God said no. The only reason you can get to heaven is because God said, I'm not going to deliver you from the cup. I'm going to use you to deliver everyone else from their cup. Thank God I had a savior. Thank God I had a man, Jesus, that accepted the answer of no. And for the joy that was set before him. Understanding I may not see it in this life. And he did it. But for the joy that was set before him. Uh, he endured the thorns of life. Uh, hey friends you got to endure some things. Uh, you got to put, put it, There's some things he doesn't deliver you from. It's okay. It's okay. Paul says take the thorn. God please take the pain. Take care of this situation. Take care of that individual. Uh, whatever it is. Uh, and after three powerful prayer meetings, God says, no. Here's what he says. Verse 9, you know it. And here's what he said. He said, no, I'm not going to do it, but my, my what? You see, you're going to learn my gra about grace. Grace. You're going to learn that grace is sufficient for thee and my strength is going to be made perfect in, in weakness. It's, it's, it's not that God didn't give him something. He just didn't give him what he wanted. See, Paul wanted a miracle. But God said, I'm not giving you a miracle. I'm giving you grace. Oh, God, I need a miracle. He says, I'm not giving you a miracle. I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you grace uh, to make it through it. Uh, I'm not going to take, I'm not taking it from you. He says, I'm just going to give you the grace to take you through it. No, no, I'm not taking that away. But when we're done, you're going to write and you're going to say, I most gladly, therefore, who I, I rather, I would rather glory in my. I would rather says, I, hey, third heaven, cool deal. But Paul said there's something more valuable. Some of y'all are like, if I could ever just see an angel, I would be a believer. Someone told me, he's like, oh, I'm going to tell you what. When, when the dead start rising, that's when you'll have revival. No, that's when you have a crowd. Jesus raised him from the dead, healed the blind, and they killed him. Having, having miracles, they, he fed 20, 100,000, 5,000, however many, they, everybody's got different people. Those same people killed him. Yeah, they'll come and watch the show, but that ain't what's going to convert them. Come on, somebody. And so Paul says, he says, I had all those spiritual experiences. I had the, I survived. I was hanging on a board. I, I mean, I'm the man. I went through it. He says, but I have, I would rather glory. 
He said the most valuable times in my life, the greatest thing that brought more to me than anything in my life were the infirmities, were the pain, were the troubles of my life. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying the most valuable thing that God could ever trust you with is a thorn in your flesh, is a, oh, is a messenger and to be buffeted and beat up a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, come on. You're going to get beat up along the way. You're going to get punched in the face. You're going to get blood, black eyed. You're going to get skint knees. This is not an easy road. This is a road with a destination. And a destiny, a road with a destination always has some opposition. But I'm thankful I'm on this way. I'm thankful I'm on the way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to glory in my infirmities. Hallelujah. Where the power of Christ was revealed the most. Hallelujah. It's not so much what he took from me. All the things that God has taken from you. You don't even know what they are because he took them from you. you. Come on somebody. You prayed deliver me from evil and you walked through this day and he did. And you don't know the evil that he delivered you from today. You don't know the car wreck he saved you from today. You don't know the truck. Come on, you're the car that could have flipped over and killed your kids today. You don't, you don't know everything he's done today. Oh, you know what? Heaven's going to be a grand revelation of everything he did for you every day of your life. You, 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 you just down here. Come on. But every once in a while, every once in a while, he says, nope, I'm not going to take you that away. I'm not going to take that one out. This one you get to go through and you'll learn. Yeah, I take most of them. Yes, I deliver you from most things. But some things are the valley. And through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't take you around it. I don't, I don't lift you up over it. But yea, though I walk. Yea, though I walk. Yea, though I walk. God, deliver me from evil. No, no, no. You got to go through the valley of the shadow of death. But when you're there... I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I, I'm gonna have a rod and I'm gonna have a staff there. And at the end of the at the end of the story, the valley of life will be the thing that changed your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm done. It is the truth that we all desire the miracle of removal. But he'll always give the grace for survival. What he don't remove and what he does not deliver you from, I found he always gives the grace to take you through it. Why did he say no? Because his grace is sufficient. Because he said, I'm going to teach you about my grace. I know you know about deliverance. That was great. I know I delivered you from drugs. That was great. I set you free from that. That was great. I healed your body there. That was great. You know all about healing and deliverance and miracles. And we're all standing. Hey, and if I was talking about them right now, one, two, three, shout, get your victory. You'd all be shouting and dancing on your heads. But the greatest sermon you could hear is the sermon of things that he didn't save and deliver you from but brought you through. And tonight I preach to people, I look here across this congregation at people who have the battle scars of life, who sit here with thorns in their flesh, who have been buffeted by the Satan, by light, whatever, that God has allowed into your life, but you have walked through those things. They've drawn you closer to God, and they will continue to do it. And now for those of you that, that once again find yourself the edge of the valley of the shadow of death or through the clouds of the storms or wherever you may stand in life. I want to remind you that the God that's carried you so far, that, 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 that has brought you through every time, He brought me through. He brought me, He has brought me through it. He's going to do it again for you. You don't give up. You don't turn around. But there are times that God, no more, He says, no, it's over. I, I want you to stand to your feet as you do in this house tonight, knowing that the presence of God is here. He's around us, and His power surrounds us tonight. 
I thank you that tonight, Lord, that, Lord, you've trusted me with the valley. Thank you, Lord, that in my, my flesh, I, 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 Lord, realize in my flesh I've struggled with some things. I understand that spiritually there's some attacks that come against us. Uh, but, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, let us learn the value uh, of your grace. Uh, let me, dear God, hold on uh, to the grace of God that will carry me through this. Uh, the grace of God that will make a way. Uh, the grace of God that will, that will uh, make a way through this valley. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus all across the building. Perhaps why don't you just lay your hand uh, on the individual next to you. If you want to come to the front, you're welcome to. Uh, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at, uh, no matter the road that you walk today, no matter the pain, uh, if it's a physical thorn, if it's spiritual, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's thoughts, if it's family, uh, if it's marriage, if it's kids, uh, come on, if it's opposition at work, I don't know. But one thing I know is that whatever that thorn may be, uh, it is, hallelujah, allowed by God. And, and get, will, God will use it to draw you closer. So so you're persecuted on the job. They're making fun of you. So it is that you are coming up against opposition in your home. Hey, friend, uh, you need to find a place of prayer. Come on, if that thorn is poking you right now and, and you are being punched in the gut by, by the adversary, by life or the situation, uh, come on, it's time to get on your knees uh, and pray like you've never prayed. Uh, come on, that's what Paul teaches us uh, to do when we hit it, obstacles in our lives. Uh, we get down on our knees and we pray like we've never prayed before. Uh, we cry out to God like we've never cried out before. Uh, we lift our voices like never before. Uh, and we find the grace of God to be more than enough. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.